Carolyn Doobie here, what's the play for today? Well today I am playing around with one of the impressible gel press plates and modeling paste. Yes, I am going to put modeling paste right onto this plate. Now why the impressible plate for this? Because well it's got this embossed design in it that's all made out of gel so it behaves just like a gel plate except well you've got the design and that's what I want to capture the dimension, the wonderfulness of this, that's what I want to catch. And because it's a gel plate, that means I can put paint on it first, customize it to the colors that I want, and then, well, you're going to see what happens with it, why I'm really falling in love with modeling paste on these things, and then I'm going to turn it into a fun little canvas. Well, I'm going to start by putting some acrylic paint on here, and I'm going to brayer it all around, and I can put a fair amount of pressure on here because I want to cover the entire thing with this paint. So I want to get it in all the, the grooves, the nooks and crannies, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to take one print with it. I'm not pushing down really hard, I'm just taking the paint off of the top. And of course gel prints like that are fun and wonderful, but I'm going to do a little bit more to this. I'm going to bring in a second color, a darker color, and I'm going to roll that just on the top. So only the parts of the pattern that are raised are going to get that darker color here. And then I'm going to let it dry completely. I didn't take any prints or pulls with it, I just let it dry as it was. So none of the paint will come up on my fingers. Now it's time to spread that modeling paste around. Kind of like frosting it. And I'm using here a spatula to spread it around because I want to make sure that I get into all the areas. So that's why you'll see me going back and forth to make sure there aren't any air pockets or bubbles, that kind of thing. I'm just pushing it all the way in. And I'm also going to go all the way to the edge of the impressible. Now, you might be thinking, how am I going to get all this modeling paste off of here? What if it sticks? Well, that's why I'm using a gel plate to do this, because things don't stick to the gel plate. It is going to peel right up when it is completely dry. But there is one trick if you want it to peel up in one piece and you want to have all of the pattern and texture from the impressible on there, and that is to use enough modeling paste. Right now I'm bringing in some more of it because I've got that first coat on, kind of like the way you do a crumb coat when you frost a cake. That's kind of what the first layer was like. And now I'm going to do the second layer of it on here. That way I've got enough of it, it's going to be thick enough so that the uh, pattern is hidden underneath there. See how as I'm doing it now I can't see what the exact pattern is under there? That's telling me that I've probably got enough modeling paste on there. Now this is not a small amount of modeling paste, I will say, and to let this dry completely takes anywhere from one to two days. And guess what? I'm not that patient. I didn't wait the full amount of time for this to be completely dry before I pulled it up. And guess what? It all worked out. It was just an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. So how did I know that the modeling paste wasn't dry all the way? Because when you touch it with your hand, if it's still cool to the touch, it's not completely dry but I'm going to live on the edge and go for it anyway. As I start pulling this up, there's one area where you can see it ripped a little bit, where the modeling paste ripped, not a problem. I'm going to stop pulling it from that direction and go from a different side, and you won't even see that that rip or tear is in there when this is all done. Now, as I'm lifting this up, the reason that I know that the modeling paste was not completely dry is because there's some areas where the paint is not sticking completely to the modeling paste. Those little bits, that's what happens when it's not completely and totally dry. But I call that an oops, and there is an amazing opportunity in it because that white area that's on there, I can add another color on top of that to create more color and dimension and interest with it. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I brought in a light color, a lime green color, and I'm just painting over, I started out just doing the white areas and then realized, wow, I really kind of like this. So I was going around other areas of the mandala, and with this, I will say, it is very easy to stay in the area that you want to because everything's raised. It's not like I have to work hard to stay within the lines here. I can just go very, very loosely around it and still stay within the lines. And this even works for the dark blue. It's actually easier for me to do the dark blue because it's down inside the channels or canals, whatever you want to call them. So to touch those up here and there was a breeze. Now I'm all done adding paint to this and I want you to see how flexible this is. I mean, it just absolutely moves around and it's not going to crack and we're going to use that to our advantage when we use it on a canvas because having this texture that can move around, well, that's extremely handy. 
Now the modeling paste that I'm using is called flexible modeling paste and that is really important for the things that I'm doing with it because I want to be able to move it around, manipulate it without it cracking. Now because I've got this wonderful fun pattern on here and all this dimension, I want to use more of that. I want to make that stand out even more. So I'm cutting this with a pair of scissors. Yep, this stuff cuts like butter. Well, I mean not really like butter because who cuts butter? But you know what I mean with this. And then I'm just going to take the scissors and cut around the outside of the pattern because I really want this pattern to shine on the canvas. Matter of fact, there's going to be quite a bit of shine happening on that canvas. So the canvas that I'm going to be using, I want to get some gold on it, and I happen to be using Texture Lux here. I'm just going to spread it on my finger. I just want a really rich metallic look to this. I'm going to do the top and all of the sides too. So here's where I want the mandala to go on the canvas. So I'm going to add some gel medium. And I thought, I'll put it on the canvas. I'm like, nah, it's probably better off if I put it right on the back of that modeling paste. And as I'm doing this with the gel medium, I'm making sure that I get as much to the edge as I can because I have a habit of not actually doing things all the way to the edge. And I am going to need that here. So I've got it positioned here, but you can see where it doesn't fit around the edge. That's where I'm going to wrap it around and I'm going to trim off any little bit of excess. So now I've got the texture here from the modeling paste and the impressible on the top and wrapping around the side. But it needed just a little bit more and I wanted to put just a touch more gold on this because as if there isn't enough gold going on. And I started out using my finger and I realized, huh, sometimes to get in smaller areas, the finger is not the most effective way to do that. So I decided maybe I should grab a paintbrush and you know what? It was a whole lot easier to just get that little touch of gold right on the edge of the modeling paste. Now, as if the gold wasn't enough shine for me, I wanted to bring in some sparkle with some of those self-adhesive gems. Now, it feels almost complete to me, just needs one last little touch, and that's a little bit of writing up in this top corner. Now, since I'm not a big fan of my own handwriting, I decided to let a stencil do the heavy lifting here. This one's called Rembrandt's Words from over at Stencil Girl, and I'm picking one of the words on there that looks very scripty and flowy to add the final touch to this. And now I'm going to call this canvas complete. I've got all that fun dimension wrapping around the side thanks to that flexible modeling paste and all that pattern from the impressible gel plate. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play and letting me be a part of your colorful journey.